Good morning, friends. This morning, a bit of a challenge as we try to sort out the connection. Um, but I trust that things will, will go well, that the Lord will um, lead us as we reflect together from, from His weight. And a reading, our reading today will be taken from Micah, Micah verse chapter 7. I'm going to read from verse 1 um, to verse 10. Um, Micah chapter 7, um, reading from verse 1 to verse 10. And listen to the word of God as it speaks to us from, from Micah. What misery is mine? I am like one who gathers a summer fruit after the gleaning of the vineyard. There is no cluster of grapes to eat, none of the early figs that I crave. The godly have been swept from the land. Not one upright man remains. All men lie in wait to shed blood. Each hunts his brother with net. Both hands are skilled in doing evil. The ruler demands the gifts. The judge accepts the bribes. The powerful dictate what they desire. They all conspire together. The best of them is like their prayer. The most upright worse than a thorn hedge. The day of your watchman has come. The day of God's visit. The day God visits you. Now is the time for their confusion. Do not trust a neighbor who... Do not trust a neighbor. Put no confidence in, in a friend, even with her who lies in your embrace. Be careful of your words. For a son dishonors his father, a daughter rises up against a mother, a daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law, a man's enemies are members of his own household. But as for me, I watch in hope. For the Lord... I wait for God. My Savior, my God, will hear me. Do not gloat over me, my enemy. Though I have fallen, I will rise. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. Because I have sinned against him, I will bear the Lord's wrath until he pleads my case and establishes my right, he will bring me out into the light. I will be his righteousness. My enemy will see it and will be covered with shame. She who said to me, where is the Lord your God? My eyes will see her downfall. Even now she will be trampled underfoot like Maya in the street. May the Lord bless the reading of his word now and always. Amen. Well, some of, some of the writings of the Bible are, are, very, are very rough and tough. And we, we will sometimes not even want to uh, think that we are reading that from the word of God, but, but that is true. We are currently at St. Mungo's uh, doing a sermon series on the book of Daniel. And um, the journey that we, we are on as a church is how, how do you remain faithful to God when you live in Babylon? And I think as, as you read from Micah and and see the context that, that he paints in, in this chapter 7 where we, we have read, he's, he, he mentions the misery that Israel is going through. And 
And some of things that he mentions here are quite devastating. Um, uh, because, you know, it's, it's at times things that we will not want to associate with, with God and with the people of God or things that are happening uh, to the people of God. And, and so uh, Micah speak into that situation. Let, listen to what he says. Um, he, he says that uh, in chapter 7 of Micah, uh, beginning at verse 1, what misery, what misery is mine. I am like one who gathers a summer fruit at the gleaning of the vineyard. There is not luster of grapes to eat. There is nothing to eat, not luster of grapes to eat. Um, none of the early figs that I crave, they are not there, those figs. The godly people, people who, who adhere to God, have been swept not one upright man remains. You know, when, when you look at people in the world, uh, this will be the position. You, you begin to, to, to battle as you look at people who might live a life of integrity, people who, um, who live with, with integrity and and that integrity is very consistent. So he says that he's trying to look for those people. He doesn't see them. Um, but, but what he sees is all men lie in wait to shed blood. Each hands his brother with net. Both hands are skilled in doing evil. The ruler demands gifts. The judge accepts bribes. The powerful dictate what they desire. The day of your watchman has come. So, as we read, he, he, he just, for me, it's a beautiful picture of, of um, giving us what, what Babylon can look like. A place that sometimes does not reflect the values of God. A place where we we are not living our lives to give honor and glory to God. A place where what God means to us is, is not taken serious. You know, God is not taken quite serious. It's a place where, where there is no faith, where you don't hang have anything to hang on but then listen to what micah says um as we read um from verse five or even going down well verse five he, con he still continues with with the what life in babylon can look like listen to these things that he says um the day of your watchmen has come, the day of God's visit. Now is the time uh, for their confusion. Um, and then in verse 5, typical Babylonian life. Do not trust a neighbor. Put no confidence in a friend. Even with her who lies in your embrace, be careful of your ways. For a son dishonors his father, a daughter rises up against a mother, a daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. A man enemies are the members of his own household. It's a typical Babylonian life where God is not at the center of, of his people. People have, have gone away from God. Their faith and, and their trust in God is not there. But then he says, there is something quite different. But as for me, in verse 7, but as for me, I watch, I watch in hope for the Lord. I wait for God my Savior. My God will hear me. 
do not gloat over my enemy. Though I have fallen, I will rise. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. Because I have sinned against him, I will bear the Lord's wrath until he pleads my case. And establish, establishes my right, he will bring me out into the light. I will see his righteousness. That is, that is so beautiful. That in the midst of this, in the midst of, of what can appear to be the destruction of the very secure place that we can stand on as the people of God. When we, when we look at around us, when we see how culture and society morality begins to crumble around us. When there is a deep longing in our lives to be closer to God. So that his light can illumine the darkness that we see in the world. The darkness that, that is caused by, by things, by people's attitude, by things that are contrary to the mercy, to the grace, and to where God is taking us. When we face these things, we realize the mercy and the grace of God holding and taking us along each and every step that we take in life. And so Micah is saying to us that rise up, deepen your faith, because God is good. God is the one who comes alongside you. Put your hope in him. Wait for God because he is the one who saves you. No matter how much you think that he is not hearing your plea, he is not hearing your prayers, he is not hearing your concerns, Micah says that God will hear me. God hears our prayers. And at an appropriate time, he come along beside us to save us. So Micah does not look uh, over his sinfulness and, and deals with the fact that we are imperfect people. We, we are in the process of, of redemption. That as, as Jesus has redeemed us, maybe, well, this is the fact is that we have been redeemed, but now we are in the process of being sanctified. And sanctification is that God is working in our lives day in and day out to perfect us, to make us people who are suitable for the kingdom life. People who will reflect the glory of God by the way we live and the way we carry ourselves. Micah here reminds us that God will always pull us so that we can experience his light. We will never forever be left in darkness. I'm not sure what your darkness might be and your need for light. Darkness can be a place of sickness. Darkness can be a place of feud. Darkness it can be a place of, um, of the tension in the family life. Darkness can be 
um, the the battle that you you have with understanding justice. Darkness can be, as you look around, you see a lot of evil happening around in your life. Darkness can be, as Micah says here, that uh, when you look around, I see not even one upright man remains. Quite serious thing that he says here. All men shed blood can be a place of darkness for us. Each hunts his brother with a net can be a place of darkness for us. Both hands are skilled in doing evil can be a place of darkness. The ruler's demands gift. It can be a place of darkness because that is what we understand. That is what is happening in the world around us. The judges accept the bribes. The powerful dictate what they desire. They conspire together. But in all these things, we might find the challenges in our relationship that bring darkness. In marriage, in our relationship with our children. We can find darkness in our finances, in our well-being, in our health in general, in darkness in our outlook. When we, when we look at life, we become quite negative and we are being pushed into a place of darkness. Darkness can be even the concern that we have with the future of the world and where things are going. Because as things places us in despair and hopelessness, we are plunged into darkness. But the promise of God is this. He will bring you out into the light. He will bring you out into the light. And I know of the mercy and the grace of God when he bring people out in the light. I will see his righteousness, he says. Because that is what God gives to us. This is what God bestowed to us because he cares deeply for us. And then in, chapter, in verse 10 where we, we have ended, we read from Micah chapter 7, 1 to 10. And in verse 10, this is what he says. Then my enemies will see it and will be covered with shame. You will not become a laughing stock of your enemies where they will stand and say, Where is the Lord your God? Because that is one of the tormenting things that the enemy can throw at us. Where is your God when you are going through these difficult times? Where is your God when you are suffering? Where is your God in your sickness? Where is your God in your hopelessness? When is your God when life is so tough for you. Micah says, my eyes will see the downfall of my enemy. Even now, she will be trampled under food like Maya in the street. Because our Lord, our Lord is always triumphant. Our Lord always victorious. So hold on to him, cling on to him, cling on to him as you cling to your dear life. Because there is much hope for us. There is much hope for the world. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May 
he shine his face on you. And may he treat you with kindness, with mercy, and with grace. Let us pray. Father, we, we are so grateful that as we, as we read Micah this morning, he just contrasted for us the, the reality of living in a secular world and how the world can scream at us and how we can be exposed to places of extreme darkness, not only in our lives, but in the lives of, of people that we know, people that we love. And that this situation of, of darkness can plunge real relationships into, into places of just mass destruction. Where marriage suffers. Where work with colleagues in the, in the work environment suffers because of so much competition and um, just the longing to bring others down. So much hopelessness that can be manifested further in, in those relationships where you many, humans are always interacting with each other. We, we see extreme polarization of relationships. And so, Father, we, we trust you. We trust your goodness. We depend on your goodness for us. And so we, we want to lift these situations. And so, Father, we, we think of of this darkness that we might find ourselves in. Darkness that people that we know, people that we love, find themselves in. We think of people who are battling with health, uh, people who are struggling with with their well-being and, and finances. People who find themselves and their families and their spouses and their children at loggerheads and there's huge rift in families and, and so much a discord and disunity in families. Families, Father, that are strained because of uh, one couple, one, one, one partner might not have a job and, and just huge strain that is places on the, on the finances of the family and the cause of tension that come as a result of that. Sometimes attention is even how children are reared in families because the father will treat kids quite differently, mother quite differently. And, and there is not a middle, middle line where they meet. And that put, is, put a huge darkness and strain in families. So, Father, we, we want to lift the situation like those. Father, we... We pray for, for the world, um, and especially, Father, we pray that uh, you will enable the world to, to recover in the economy um, because it has taken a huge battering over this last two to three years with, with COVID and the relief that, that, that was needed. And and how to alleviate the, the spread and the infections. It's, it remains quite a huge responsibility of, of states around the world.
need to be able to to deal with that and the restoration that is needed in that aspect of life so we trust you with it so father we pray that you will carry us you will carry us in 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 situation where we continue to hold on to you to hope and trust and the light that you shine in our lives that our lives will be lives that bring glory and honor to you. And so, Father, we pray for the ministry that we do here. We pray for the Employment Bureau. We pray um, for, for the work and the ministry and the mission of St. Mangos and of the Church of Jesus Christ out of the world. We pray for the, for the work that we do with, with our social action agent, uh, um, branch um, as we meet and alleviate uh, poverty, um, the work that we do at Deep Slot, um, in empowering and giving people skills and the ability to fend for themselves in life. We pray, Father, for the different ministries. We pray for um, the work that we do in the family ministries. We, we pray for um the work that we we do in our christian formation so father we we pray for the work that we do in the pastoral care and so father we just very conscious that each and every branch of the church of jesus christ is engaged in this ministry and father we pray that you will empower you will strengthen your people as we as we respond to your call and serve you in the world so we pray that you will lead us this week and that um, as we live our lives whatever we do father we will do to honor you and to glorify your name we pray this in jesus christ our lord and savior amen dear friends it has been it has been great i i just pray and lift you up before god i pray that god will will hold you, will strengthen you, will walk with you, will journey with you, and that God will provide whatever you long for because he is always by your side, always walking with you, always holding you in his hand. May you feel the warmth of his love and of his power now and always. Thank you for logging in. Thank you for, for joining us in this time of prayer. Bless you. Amen. <music>